As part of addressing the shortage of megawatts, ESCOM will be buying energy from the businesses, households and neighbouring countries. A uh, number of our neighbouring countries in southern Africa, such as Botswana and Zambia, have more electricity capacity than they require. ESCOM will now import power from these countries through the Southern African Power Pool Arrangement. Meanwhile, Zambia's integrated power utility, ZESCO, has declared that the country has a surplus capacity of about 1,000 megawatts. ZESCO Managing Director Victor Mapani says currently the installed national generation capacity stands at 3,456 megawatts against a peak national demand of approximately 2,300 megawatts. ZESCO is currently anchoring the construction of the transmission line to connect Zimbabwe, Zambia, Botswana, Namibia interconnector while at the same time is collaborating on the Zambia, Tanzania, Kenya interconnector. ZESCO already operates in regional interconnectors, which include the Kariba lines to Zimbabwe, the Sesheke Nam power line to Namibia, the CEC lines to DRC, and the Kazungula Kasane line to Botswana. Right, we speak now to Zambian energy expert Johnston Chikwanda. He is chairperson of Energy Forum in Zambia. Very good evening to you, and thank you so much for speaking to us. So, We'll talk about the initiative in just a moment, but um, is there an initiative or building a capacity that already exists, a framework that we're using besides uh, what we're talking about, the SAPP here? I thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, indeed, um, there is the uh, opportunities here for synergies within the Southern Africa power pool. The regional uh, integration, which the AU has been talking about, and uh, what we are beginning to see is that um, the Southern Africa region is still in a significant vulnerability from an energy insecurity point of view. Even when one or two countries are coming out of the energy poverty, uh, there is still a lot of need to support one another in the region. So uh, within the framework that is currently existing, the Southern Africa power pool market, uh, there is the possibilities of trading with, the, with one another. But uh, there is also ongoing capacity to improve the generation and the transmission connectivities. Hmm. Just in terms of what Zambia itself has, I understand that uh, um, ESCOM trades there every day, but what I understand is that uh, Zesco says Zambia had about 1,000 megawatts capacity. So this is what South Africa is willing to buy from the private sector there. But just looking at the SAC, SAPP highlights and report from last year, as a region of the 12 SAPP countries, the excess generation capacity on average is almost uh, 10,000 megawatts. I'm just looking at sustainability levels here. Well, um, first and foremost, from the Zambian point of view, we also had the considerable uh, power deficits. In 2020, we were having load shedding of up to eight hours uh, in, in a day. That uh, really harmed the small and medium enterprise, and just generally the industry was harmed. We were looking into EDM, EDM of Mozambique and uh, also ESCOM, but we also had a very big uh, power plant, which was under construction. And that is the Kafue Gorge lower power plant, which is 750 megawatts. On the Kafue River, uh, we already have got uh, two existing power plants. And this one, which was commissioned in total, in totality, just um, three weeks ago, uh, brings the number of power plants on the Kafue River to three which gives us 1,800 megawatts on one river. So it is a coming online of the Kafue Gorge Lower, which is 750 megawatts, which has changed the complexion. That is the one which has changed the topography of the energy security in the country, Zambia. And because our power is coming from 81% hydro, and of course the other coming from thermal, uh, so in terms of the energy 
our portfolio, we are confident that there is good sustainability here. Of course, we are alive to the vulnerability to climate change, uh, which can cause a lot of problems to the hydrological uh, systems. But in terms of sustainability, for now, we are, I think we are quite okay. We know that the internal demand is also quite high because 65% of households do not have access to, to power and the rural electrification rates are quite low, but we have sufficient to share, I think, at the moment. Namibia is getting something, Zimbabwe is getting something, and we believe that ZESCO can make a difference to what Big Brother ESCOM is looking for. And we'll talk about the huge investment that Sam is making in uh, renewable energies. But I want to just talk about the competitive market. As you mentioned, it decreased with, between the period 2022-2021. So just looking at what was traded uh, in the period up to 2021, I believe the day ahead market continued to dominate uh, the SAPP competitive uh, electricity market, taking about 69% uh, of the total energy. As you mentioned, there seems to be the uh, surplus coming from there. But what is the greater plan in terms of uh, the member countries and how they intend to increase trade? I'm looking here, and if you could just explain it to us, the Ford physical market, the weekly market, the monthly market, and what differences this makes for capacity? Well, uh, first and foremost, the almost the whole region is uh, doing something in terms of increasing access to electricity and uh, also increasing the generation capacity. Uh, when you look at uh, the number of projects in the region itself, which are at different stages of, uh, of development, uh, whether it's in Mozambique, in Zambia itself, in Zimbabwe, uh, Zambia there is a 2,400 megawatts which uh, uh, the Batoka Gorge, uh, which is uh, under, um, you know, uh, in the pipeline, and the, another 1,000 megawatts in the northern circuit of the country, which the country will be starting to develop. And um, uh, so what we're seeing is that uh, we understand that uh, we are still very behind in terms of generation capacity as, as a continent and also as a region. So what we need to do is not just increase the, the generation capacity, but also the, the backbone, uh, strengthening the transmission lines, which is why that is a Zavona um, project, which connects uh, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Botswana, and Namibia, funded by the World Bank. Uh, that transmission line is very, very critical because we can increase the generation but also the state of the infrastructure transmission is uh, quite inadequate and aged. So the, 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 what we're seeing also is that uh, we are trapped in what is known as the energy trilemma, where a number of countries are trapped between the uh, environmental concerns coming out of the, the, you know, the thermal power plants and then the low cost of the tariff, which makes the power, the, the, the power utility companies to consistently post losses they are not able to sell electricity at a tariff that is cost reflective. And also the, you know, the edge of the installations themselves, they are very old, most of these power plants, mm -hmm. and they require considerable amounts of money. So uh, there is a need to alter all that, but also we need so to perhaps do So perhaps let me just stop you there because we are running out of time. And I'm glad you mentioned that because we understand that the process was at some point already underway with uh, our... Minister Pravin Gordon tried to renegotiate in 2018 uh, the issue of uh, tariffs. Uh, and as a result, that mission was cancelled. But the SAPP has an RTIFF uh, uh, plan, strategic plan between 2020 and 2020, 2030. So would this be within this realm? What would be the licensing requirements, for instance? That is what we're talking about ourselves because we have cumbersome licensing processes in general in the African countries. And now there is push that if we have to accelerate the um, electrification and the energy, you know, um, energy increase, there is a need to harmonize the regulatory frameworks within the uh, Southern Africa power pool. 
Because once we regularize on the structure and the reforms uh, that are happening in regulatory um, frameworks, then we can also look at the Eastern Africa power pool where Zambia wants to interconnect. Because as you know there, there is also a very big power plant, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance to partially commission it. So the interconnection of the regional power pools is going to play a lot of, um, uh, it's going to make a lot of difference. But we need to, to harmonize the frameworks, the tariffs issues, the way we are charging the willing charges, and the way we, just the governance part of it needs to be, needs to be remodeled. But fortunately, the tariffs also, like within the Southern Africa power pool, uh, are quite uh, flexible and, uh, and agreed. 